Hello everybody and welcome back to the Winner in a Week series on Poker Math entitled Essentials Made Easy. My name is Dylan and in this final video I'll be covering optimal statistics as provided by multiple strategy websites, Holder Manager itself, and my own personal experience both in live and online games. Um, we'll briefly look at the starting hand charts for No Limit and Fixed Limit Hold'em. Uh, both for cash game and tournament play. These starting hand charts are explained in greater detail in the respective video sections pertaining to the different games. Uh, it should be used at your discretion. Uh, they're all general recommendations and not fixed lines of play. But again, you really need proper instruction on all that in order to successfully implement it into your game. Uh, and that you're going to find then again in the respective videos on the different game types. So with that, I'd like to go to the video outline. And before we actually get into the optimal stats, I want to just touch on a few key points here. Always keep in mind that there is a market difference between cash game play and tournament play. There's a market difference between full ring play versus six max play. And there is an even greater difference when you're playing in in games where there's only four players or when you're in a heads-up. Essentially, yeah, completely different games with completely different strategies, right? Although a lot of the principles, uh, especially in post-flop uh, post play, will pertain to all different game types. Um, again, you should not mix and match the different ideas you get from different coaches or from different poker sites pertaining to recommendations for cash games as such. Um, and tournament play, and then even within tournament and cash games, of course, you have to distinguish between uh, fixed limit, no limit, uh, total players on board, and yeah, stack sizes. Uh, th there's just an infinite number of factors that go into any given decision, right? And it's all game specific, and it's all player specific, and it's all table specific. Now, this is the case when you're only talking about uh, cash game versus tournaments versus no limit versus fixed limit versus full ring versus six max versus heads up play inside of one general game type. Okay, That can be further distinguished, for example, between Hold'em and Omaha, which are, again, a lot of principles will correspond, uh, especially betting types, uh, betting moves, pop manipulation. But they, again, are night and day game uh, with completely different principles, although a lot of the principles, again, do correspond. Uh, same scenario, you know, hold'em versus stud versus five-card draw or five-card stud. You, you know, you should definitely see all the different videos pertaining to these different game types. Not to mention games where you have high-low splits, um, low qualifiers. I mean, it just the list goes on and on. Very clearly distinguish all the information you get from any website, from any coach um, that pertains also general, yeah, generally to life as such, anytime you get information, make sure that you have the, the proper context, right, in order to understand that information. And yeah, don't mix and match information pertaining to certain game types when actually uh, they don't necessarily correspond one to one uh, across the board. Okay, that being said, I'd like to look then now at Hold'em, that's H-E, here the acronym, Hold'em Full Ring Games. Um, the starting hands charts here, um, for the specifics again, you need to see player profiling and coaching videos uh, for in-play application on that, uh, also the theoretical sections for cash game and tournaments. Um, but in general, um, what I think we'll do at this point is um, show you the starting hands charts Okay, for six max and full ring. Yeah, before we actually get into these stats, just as a brief overview, and what I'll do is I'll just post this uh, brief synopsis that I put together, so that you can pause the video and have a look at it um, in greater detail. Okay, so this is going to be your uh, general, again, general recommendations <laughs> for six max. General recommendations here for full ring. Uh, no limit, and again, always EP is early position, middle position, cutoff button, and small blind. General recommendations for short stack strategy play. Next is general notes for all no limit um, starting hands charts. Okay, bet sizing especially. 
general recommendation here for full ring fixed limit starting hand ranges. And finally here we've got uh, sit and go recommendations for the early phase, the middle phase, and the late phase. And then sit and go play on the bubbles and then heads up. Um, again, definitely see the videos on tournament play to make sense of all that. Um, finally we have here multi-table tournaments, full ring, no limit. Uh, early phase, middle phase, and late phase, and then old. Uh, Dan Harrington's M factor. That's just, uh, again, I'm, I, I'm just going to restate this because um, in order to properly understand what was just uh, posted there, you need, you need proper instruction on that. So see the respective videos, and yeah, it should definitely improve your game in the long run, especially for those of you who are just getting started. Um, as always, restate it again, don't fixate. Don't, uh, don't think that this is you know, some kind of a, a Bible or a, a very, very strict or uh, set in stone kind of playlist. It's not. Right? The general recommendations, it's always player specific, as I just mentioned, always table specific, always game specific. Um, yeah, and yeah, specific and uh, should should be should be adjusted um, in accordance with yeah multiple other factors. You're gonna find a lot of this information all over the place. You're gonna find it in two plus two forums. You're gonna find it in Aces or Deuces Cracked. You know, you're gonna get mixed information from all over the place. This, based on my experience um, and years of study, is very very sound. It pertains very much to yeah, especially online play, um, and yeah, I think these numbers, you know, you can really, you can really, really trust, and it's it's basically a good overview, especially of the different types of players. For the very specific details, see the video on player profiling, but this will give you a good overview, um, so that when you are using your your holder manager online, you know when you're up against a tag, when you're up against a lag, when you're up against rocks, um, and how to adjust your play according. So with that, I'd like to look at, again, uh, these general descriptions of different player styles uh, based on statistics. Uh, different player types, you can also call them. Standard terms that you're going to hear are tags and lags, as well as um, yeah, rocks and calling stations, uh, donks, maniacs, uh, the list goes on and on. And these two styles are generally recommended um, for winning play. Again, general recommendation. Okay, it depends completely where you're playing, the level, uh, and everything else. Uh, tags are very often referred to as lions. Um, lags is um, kind of a lion or a jackal. And um, we'll get it here into stations and um, and and kind of. Uh, nitty nitty rock kind of players, and those are referred to respectively then as elephants and mice. And these kind of animal descriptions came from uh, Phil Helmuth here, um, characterizing possible opponents using the five uh, animal personality types. You know, lions, tight aggressive, jackals, loose aggressive, the elephant is in loose passive, uh, calling station again, uh, mouse is in tight passive. Uh, the eagle is then, okay, yeah, top pro. And yeah, this guy here, this this article is very very brilliant. It's covered again uh, in great detail in the article or in the video on um, in player profiling. But um, the eagle is then one who just has perfect adjustment based on table condition, player conditions, etc. Um, just so you guys have this, you can uh, find this article uh, under this address here, just to give you the source. That, you know, very quickly for the quotes we have here, the different animal types, in case you hear that from different coaching videos, this guy's, you know, lion, kind of a jackal type, this is what they're referring to, tag style, lag style. This is just basically a quick table um, giving you that range. So V-pips again here, full ring tags, uh, playing a big stack strategy, again, 30 to 20 percent V-pip, uh, two-thirds of that is a PFR, uh, attempt to steal ATS uh, around... Yeah, anywhere from 15 to probably more like 30, 35, but you know, anything under 40 for attempt to steal is again open raises from late position uh, or from the small blind. Uh, fold to steal, it's quite standard, uh, 70 to yeah, 70 to 90 percent. 
Yeah, total aggression factor post flop again, you know, anywhere from two to four. Uh, flop, or I'm sorry, fold to flop C bets. This is quite standard for all of us. Uh, and went to showdown around. Yes, yeah, around these numbers, so to say. Now, if you see these, if you see these kind of numbers, yeah, you can generally assume over a certain sample size that you're playing a decent player. He may not be a winning player as such, but uh, he has a very good grasp of the game. Okay, he's playing a tight, aggressive style, and that is in the long run um, that's proven yeah, over thousands and thousands, millions and millions of hands to be the winning style uh, in today's playing environment, um, together with uh, the lag style. Okay, when playing big stack strategy, um, typical four ring tag. If you're playing a short stack strategy, and this you know tag and this meaning would be much more like a rock, you know, kind of an extreme tag. Um, v pip only playing you know anywhere from five to eight percent of hands, raising exactly the same amount more or less. Uh, never limping. There's you know calling is completely forbidden in the strategy. Uh, attempt to steal. You know they get very creative here. Fold to steal. The, the rest of the stats are pretty much the same. The aggression factor is a bit actually a bit more in general um, because of this hit and run kind of hardcore tight aggressive strategy. Uh, again, a bit higher flop aggression flat, uh, factors. Um, Fold to a flop C bet in a, um, yeah. Actually, there is a, you know, of course, some short stack strategy players will be, you know, folding to C bets from time to time. That's just that when they get involved, they're so strong that uh, this is rarely the case. Okay, the winter showdown is quite high because they are playing this, you know, strategy where they often get it all in pre-flop or on the flop itself. And here you've got the different ranges, um, you know, from typical lags, okay, uh, higher, much higher attempt to steals, uh, yeah, it depends highly on, yeah, how they react to the different opponents, um, and as you see here, flop aggression factor up, upwards of seven even, um, yeah, and that's how that works out. So a tag lag, kind of a combination, would then be your, your typical eagle uh, in today's playing environment, somebody who changes it up, switches gears properly, adjusts in relation to uh, the players he's facing, and yeah, you could give this guy kind of the eagle, eagle stamp, right? Uh, Hold a manager, by the way, has these icons, and they, when they automatically post certain icons in the replayer, they're basing it very often on similar, similar stats. Um, perfect player, yeah, specific moves, adaptation, deception, unreadability, metagame, and psychological master. All three of these types, they're they're very very strong. If you got a lot of these guys on your table, switch tables. <laughs> Look for a better game. Okay, six max. Um, hold them short-handed. So uh, starting hands charts we just saw. Uh, the tags and the lag stats for this look a bit different. Mm, you know, there's a lot more variance as the number of players decreases. And your tags, you know, for that reason also uh, with six max you can widen your ranges, of course, right? Because the likelihood that other players have really strong hands uh, decreases quite a bit. Um, so tags, again, lines here, their stats are going to be somewhere in this range. Uh, we've added squeezes to that, and yeah, just have a look at that at your leisure if you are playing six max. And you see these kind of stats, you know, heads up, you're against a decent player, and yeah. I've put here, you know, lag style for the six max. It's typical tag stats here after two or three strong German beers. Um, just a bit more gamble, you know, they're... They're going to widen this up a bit. They're going to increase here. You know, they're going to be squeezing more. They may be three betting and four betting light. Again, see the theoretical videos for all that, but it, that's pretty much a good summary of the difference between those two styles when playing uh, six packs and shorthanded games. Um, very good. These numbers come from an article from the Manager itself. For those of you who have the program, you can actually just um, go to the article section and you get that. It's um, the one authored by Brent. And what he's done here is um, analyzed his database from NL100 to NL1000 six max players um, for 5,000 hands or more and analyzed the five best or most winning players. Okay, and these were their numbers for six max games. Yeah, an extreme adjusted EV, big blinds per 100 at 13. That um, That's very, very high. Yeah, I'm sure it's correct. However, you know, this guy's um, also a really strong mathematical player. Apparently, um, VPIP PFR again. We see this, you know, four to three ratio, three to two, um, three bets at five percent. Went to showdown at twenty-six. 
uh, one at the showdown, just over 50%. Um, the aggression factor here, right at two to three. Yeah, and the percentage, you know, they're making aggressive moves basically on 33% of all post flop streets. Positional analysis, just to give you an idea how that is. Um, their average big blinds per 100 for the six positions. You know, winning everywhere else outside of the blinds. Blinds, you know, that's, that is a problem for every single player, right? Even the best, you know, these guys that are posting 13 big blinds per 100 wins are losing, you know, thousands of dollars here in the small and the big. Good, this shows a VPIP and PFR in the respective positions. That's um, it's very important. It's very useful for you guys, I think, um, to see how they adjust from early to middle to cut off to button and also in the blinds and how that then worked out for them over, um, what do we have here, 13,000 hands, 21, 24, etc. Good, yeah, went to showdown um, average percentages and under here you have then, of course, the total average line. Hold them, no limit, heads up. You can generally attribute, you know, heads up play to the blind battles in, again, full ring and six max. Um, not one to one by any means, right? Because of course the chances of players having a bit better hands um, after everyone's folded out, in, in especially in full ring, is a bit higher than when you're just playing heads up over and over again, uh, back and forth. But um, when you are just sitting down, let's say for example at, at heads up tables and you're a heads up player, um, the small blind is always the, the button and first stack pre-flop and in position on all post-flop streets. Again, position is everything here, and these are suggested open raises um, from the small blind. All right, 60 to 70 percent of all hands and never limp. All right, just as a word of the wise, uh, if you do play heads-up cash games and you don't know this, yeah, you're going to be in a really bad spot. Just know that you know when you are in heads-up, you're playing an extreme lag style. You know, maniac style. This would be considered 60 to 7 percent in full ring and even a maniac in, in six max, okay? But this is very standard in heads up, okay? Just given the likelihood that your opponent doesn't have much either. Um, good race sizes, you know, three big blinds given uh, two to one pot odds. Um, and these are just kind of two recommended ranges at 60 and 70 percent of what you should be open raising from the small blind into the big blind in heads up. Uh, you have this three bet calling range, that's when the big blind then re-raises, comes over the top, and the four bet range you know, when you don't just call that, but you actually push on top. And that's again here, this good old standard jacks are better. And ace king, 3% of all. And big blind uh, and heads up your defense range. The defense can be either passive or active. Um, three bet range against a high full to three bet percentage. You know, you can increase that a bit. Um, and the general three betting range would be something like this. And uh, the holder manager replayer examples, I think we're going to skip because that. Uh, these different topics have been touched on in previous videos. So in this very brief concluding video to our series on poker math, you've seen statistics that are very indicative of certain styles of play, certain types of players, and as mentioned previously, most winning players are using a tag and tag lag style, uh, at least in full ring and six max games, cash games, and of course tournament is its own, yeah, it's a completely separate topic and um, your style changes markedly based on the different phases of the tournament. Um, but for cash games, again, this tag lag style is very, very common among winning players, especially online and also live. And if you are playing heads up uh, cash games, definitely uh, buy a couple books and study up on that because if you don't, you're going to be the fish that these guys are targeting. Concerning the starting hands charts, again, uh, definitely see the respective videos for the different game types that go into much greater detail uh, pertaining to the type of game, um, the limit, the, the amount of players, etc. Okay, this was just to give you guys a very general and broad view of what general and what very common stats will look like for the different player types. Um, again, if you find yourself on tables with too many lags, too many tags, if you have lags to your left, it's definitely, definitely time to switch tables. Um, you want to have these kind of lag guys to your right. Optimal scenarios, you're going to get a lot of uh, calling stations, right? A lot of the so-called elephants that we had mentioned earlier. And, um, yeah, potentially maniacs, but if you do have maniacs again and even lags, you want to have them to your right, 
And if they are to your left, you definitely want to switch tables and find a better playing situation. Again, I do hope this is very useful for your general understanding of poker math, and I uh, hope that we have achieved our goal here, making the essentials easy. And if you do have any questions pertaining to any of the topics we've covered in this video or in the previous four on poker math, feel free to contact me at any time. Till the next video, all the best, and best of luck at the tables.